Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the SDFT Fancast. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. I can't believe it either. Every time. Bloody hell. Uh, how's, everybody, how's everybody doing? What's going on you guys in the world? Just living it, man. Doing it. Hell yeah. Good. Had a good Easter. How about you guys? Great Easter. I hung out. Uh, I just relaxed, which is the, the most I could ask for. Yeah, same. Same, same thing. Still, uh, yeah. still getting back to reality after Montana. To be honest, it's been a quite the adjustment. Feels like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why our schedule's been all messed up for reasons. Uh, trips that were amazing, uh, and I'm glad you guys went on them. And then I hurt my shoulders, and I had to take muscle relaxers for a couple days. So I was more than willing to postpone a bunch of episodes and stuff like that. So. We, we're back to normal. We recorded. You don't remember, dude. I hope not. <laughs> Good Lord. Eight episodes. Dad, dude, <laughs> right. yeah. You crushed it, man. <laughs> dude, that would be amazing. I would love to see video of that. No, I would just be asleep <laughs> or asking somebody else to to be the host. But no, it is Wednesday, which we usually record on Sundays. But we'll do Wednesday and then get back on track Sunday uh, for anybody that's interested. Mm-hmm. One thing, last episode I talked about, I brought up uh, going to the Riptide event for the new scarf and didn't even have the scarf, so I wanted to show that. So I'll be wearing that this episode. Mea culpa. Sorry, don't beat me up next time you see me. Boom. Looks sick. Oh yeah. Love it. Oh, so I, need, I need one, man. Yeah. You know what? All right. I'll get you one. Happy I'll birthday. Some cash. It needs to also, go right no. no. I should have got you one. Here. Yeah. What? What a dumbass, man. No, I should have got you one and shipped it up. I don't know. My bad. That's on me. Also, tune into last week's episode because uh, it's definitely shown in in the edit. So, Cryptids gets the shout out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it was a good drop on the edit. It looks cool. Oh, thank you, Christopher. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I totally proof watch the episodes. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I got you, Nate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I just trust you. All right. I trust you. What was what was the uh, what was his his one piece of advice on on podcasting? Do you remember what it was? Uh, we don't have to go into that. I do remember exactly what it was and it was listen, listen to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> listen to yourself, watch yourself. It's the only way you're gonna get better. And I'm so happy to hear that our host is doing that. <laughs> Not this time. gotta listen to yourself absolutely um but no in the notes i wrote we'll talk about kind of sdfc recap and what i meant by that is just a refresh as to why we would do an sdfc podcast um and we're all from san diego have watched soccer for a long time all that stuff so we're hoping to get new viewers so anybody new looking in that's why Yep. Okay. Speaking of San Diego FC, there is news, which is exciting. Because last episode we talked about the new signings, which due to okay. So Julie and I were in our kitchen just now and I was watching the video over and over again of Yepa and Marcus uh introducing themselves to the team because I was tired of absolutely butchering <laughs> somebody's name after yeah. one episode. And Yepa. so yeah, it's pronounced Yepa. Marcus and Vartsen and Yepe Yeah, Marcus. Yeah, 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 I'd have to look. I'd have to watch it again. I'd have still, to don't, still don't got his last name, huh? You know what? Okay, I yep, did. Yep. I had it. I, Tverskov. Got it. It's, it's in Tvers- our thumbnail. I should have. Yeah, but Tverskov. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Great name. Awesome name. Name my and brought up later in the episode. But no, there are new, are uh, two new signings, and we're very excited because that's like. Apart from front office stuff, that's the most substantial news I would say we've heard so far. Totally. In regards to the team. Besides yeah. For, for Rand, yeah. Besides, yeah, Duran. I mean, but that was, what, that was oh, six months ago. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I guess Durant, I mean to yeah, say yeah. the signings are the biggest news thus far. Like, because, yeah. Exactly. I, I was trying to be nice. That's the stuff that the fans care about, right? Is the signings, the players. I so sure. it's exciting. But on that front, the person that puts those players together and has the biggest voice and all those things is the technical director. And we did hire a new one. And that is actually really effing exciting because that uh, there's good to have a, a boss, I guess, or a, 
uh, at Honcho that's kind of overseeing, I would imagine, uh, this is a guess, I'm guessing he's overseeing the new players brought in and all that. He's the freaking technical director, but it's Carlos Savinia. Uh, from Mexico, he started his career at America, which in my opinion, and I know the Chivas fans and other fans are going to get mad at me, but I would, I would say America is probably the biggest Mexican team in the history of Mexican soccer. Sorry if I offended anybody. That's just my opinion from this. I don't know year. any better, so I'll, God damn it, I'm going to take your word for it. I mean, they literally play at the Estadio Azteca, and that's the Mexican national team stadium. And that, that stadium is pretty historic and all that. So for them to be playing there and to be based out of the, the uh, capital city and all that, it's hard. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to see them as the, as the one. But it was really exciting to see his, his resume uh, because he went from America to a club in Belgium that I can't remember. I can't pronounce them, but it ends in Bruges, B-R-U-G-G-E. Um, but that's like a, a sister club, I guess, to Monaco. And then he was a technical director at Monaco, which is a huge club in France. Uh, club, club Bruges, uh, there's a, a Right to Dream player playing for them right now that I brought up a couple episodes ago. Okay. Uh, well, there you go. Was, Another uh, connection I didn't even know about. Yeah. The research, Chris. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, my friend. Oh, okay, no, man. but that's, I mean, that's exciting. What do you guys, I've been talking too much. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, having a guy with that level of uh, credentials as our technical director, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. And, uh, and you know what? I should say, I'm talking like this is already done. I feel like that because Fabrizio already tweeted it. So. It's you like, know, it's, you know they, I thought it's rumored, right? Or is it, it's like, they're in, it, they're in talk, they're not rumored, they're in talks and discussions and it's I don't know if deal. it's even finalized. I'm talking like it is. And the only reason I'm doing so, yeah, is because Fabrizio Romano, like the head scout or the head guy that just every, I swear, like teams probably pay him to tweet about them because he's the guy people look at for transfers. Like he's like... Because other people feed him the information, then he's kind of the voice now. He's like the sound piece for all tra- all major transfers or major news. It's like an international soccer, it feels like. The Adam Schefter of, of soccer. All right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I can... Oh, yes. got it. ESPN's already pretty much reporting on it as well, saying it's a done deal. Nice. So That's a- who, can, who can fill me in on exactly what a technical director does besides overseeing the scouts, so to speak, on, on what talent we're bringing in. Like, what? I get, uh, who, who's a technical director that maybe I would have known? Or, like... I honestly don't know how they fit in MLS. I will be, I'll be candid here. I know it more in how they kind of fit in the, in the Premier League, uh, all to be totally honest. But I would, I would imagine a technical director... Again, overseas transfers. And so, from, kind of, sorry, just a quick Google search. It kind of feels like, like a GM in, in other sports, like in football and baseball and stuff, where they're sort of like the head scout. They sort of oversee the transfers and oversee all the scouts and stuff, and probably at the end of the day make the final decision on what talent they bring in. So it's a pretty okay. significant That's- position. That's what I imagine. And I would read about it. And the reason I brought the Premier League up, because I'm always reading about how the new manager is at odds with the technical director. So that's why I assume that it was somebody that had to do, had a say in how the team is formed and all those things. So I think it's op- your- operations on and off the field is what the technical pun intended uh, definition said. Nice. Higgins, so called- from, uh, Higgins hey. from Ted Lasso. <laughs> I like nice. it. Is that is that his if you get it, you get it. <laughs> Ted Lasso, great show. I gotta. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll finish it, Chris. I swear. All right. Same but then, never, but no, that's exciting. I'm excited. He has a good pedigree, and you know what? He's from Mexico, so is he going to bring in Chucky Lozano? Is he going to get my boy? And like the Better fan base, it, like maybe. It- touch into the culture of the Mexican fan base too, which is already, you know, plentiful in San Diego. So just the diversity and just the amount of people that are going to want to go to the games, I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be immense. Wonder yeah. what like the demographic of 
people that live in San Diego who, you know, were forced to be fans of either the Galaxy or LAFC will actually make the switch to SCFC. Like us, obviously, it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. We're all all yeah. in. All in. But what if people are like just huge, huge, you know, like a lot of a lot of San Diegans here are Dodger fans, not Padre fans. I wonder if there's going to be that kind of dynamic where people hold the line, so to speak, and stick as an LAFC or Galaxy fan. And if they do, I hate those people. Uh, just, <laughs> mm-hmm. just, Go watch the Dodger FC fan cast, something. Yeah, earlier. right. <laughs> yeah. I hope there'll be enough that switch. Like, it's a lot of Dodger fans, Padres or in anything, I think since it's such a fresh team, there might be a lot of them that change over. Unless they're like LA transplants, which I feel like those are few and far between. So hopefully since it's since it's a new team, they'll get a lot more people supporting SDFC. In theory, hopefully. It seems like it going to the Chrome Ball events, but I, I agree. So. And and like you said, the transplants coming here may even just root for SCFC just because I, I don't know I, I can't speak to the hardcore level of fanhood um, for the LA soccer teams that's probably not as hardcore as the Dodgers I would imagine or like the Raiders yeah oh yeah the Dodgers San Diego's like it's the best city like in the whole freaking state man like just state fans. country baby I I've been I've been a few places and I I swear I'm not joking San Diego is my favorite and it's yeah dope. you know probably because I grew up here but genuinely like San Diego is sick y'all it really is we're really lucky to have grown up here. Hey, and- speaking of fans, real quick, uh, my wife actually brought up this idea. Sorry to go on a tangent, but so for maybe the quiz games or even just a way to get the six people who listen to this involved. What Mm -hmm. if we started taking like a fan question for the quiz game or like even just a fan topic that we can all talk about? Someone can. I would love that. Yeah. So so someone, they could just DM you, Nate, because if it is a quiz game question, then only you would see it. And yeah. Nate, Nate runs our Instagram. He's the only one who sees it. So, um, her and his wife, Julie, or his girlfriend, Julie, as well. We uh, talked about today. I think we've lived together long enough that we're technically a domestic partner. Law. Life is perfectly fine. Nice. Okay. Apologies. Uh, actually, no, I don't apologize. It's legal. Uh, yeah. So, DM Nate with your questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll put out I'm a all little. For it. Please, yeah, topics. Let's... Please. Yeah. For it. Hit us up. And uh, maybe your question will get asked because oh, you're the only because you're the only one that submitted it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a good chance if you submit something, it's going to be talked about. Yeah, yeah now's the time, it. man. Before we have twelve people watching, I'm going to yep. send in. I'm going to send in like fifty so that I get mine <laughs> read and I know what the answer is. Chris T, Chris M, oh Chris God. L, Chris P, Chris. <laughs> That'd be so good. But no, it's funny you bring that up because I was actually looking at. I realized that I can look at the the uh, likes and the dislikes on the YouTube videos. And in the first like four of our episodes, there's dislikes and then there's none after that. And that felt even worse than the dislikes. Like, yeah, because people just stop listening. Time to fucking dislike it. <laughs> <sighs> no. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. I was, I was seriously laughing to myself as I was sitting on my computer earlier. Um, but we were talking about uh, people within SDFC. There, I saw on the Instagram and Instagram, and there's uh, Gabe Farfan is an emerging talent scout, and I couldn't tell if it was for San Diego FC in particular. I think so, but there was also other Right to Dream scouts, and it looks like they really put an onus on the human being aspect of the players, and that actually is kind of refreshing that I they kind that. of forward. I, uh, yeah, they're like trying to build. Sorry, Chris. Get right back to you there. Um, I, yeah, I love that they're trying to build good young men and women, and just like more than just football. It's just about the individual person. So yeah, go ahead, Chris. So I have some quotes here from the three Right to Dream scouts that um, were recently. I think they did an AMA on either Twitter or Instagram or something like that, which is yeah, pretty cool. Twitter missed it. Um, yeah, um, but Gabe said it. Quote, it's a holistic view. You're looking at the player as a whole, not just as a commodity. They're a human being first. 
Jeremy said, we open our arms to kids in societies that have been marginalized. They are all worthy. And Mirhan said, in life, we all need to meet someone who recognizes our talent and says, I believe in you. So, yeah, nice. super positive. Speaking of Ted Lasso, those are all like Ted Lasso quotes. Exactly. I feel good. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. I think it's wonderful. Dude, hell, I, I'm all in. I'm down. Uh, Kate brought up the Chrome Ball events. The Carlsbad one was uh, rescheduled indefinitely because of weather. We have a new date, August 3rd. So you guys nice. might be able to, to hit it now. August 3rd? Yeah. Quite At a least that's away. what I have in my notes. Let's hook up my notes correctly. It's going all the way until like the end of yeah. the, uh, this year. So they'll start getting more spread out as the year goes on. Yeah. Um, so they probably just had to find an available date in the summer. The last one should be a freaking powwow at Suquan. That'd be so sick. <laughs> Maybe I'll come down for the Carlsbad yeah. one in August. I'll play it by ear. But... Dude, you got to come down for the last one because they'll probably have a full roster. The team will be there. Who knows by then? Whoa. That one's going to... Yeah. Whoa. What? There's the two of you. Colin is transformed. He, he's entered How the so? Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Colin took Colin the like, I need to oh, oh, shit. High-speed modem is intolerably slow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's eerie. Um, it's well, like a, on so... the Matrix when Neo's mouth like folds over. He's like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the FBI <laughs> the is taking a photo of me real quick or something yeah. like... We need to have like a technical difficulty. He's like, we'll be right back. It's like a hammer hitting like a squirrel or something or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that should be the uh, thumbnail. Yeah, got exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had a, a little bit of technical difficulty there, but we were discussing back to back uh, weeks. Well, Two weeks in we, a row, hey, man. We're, we're warming we up. Are we're, NBA Jam rules heating up. <laughs> Absolutely. Now we're talking about you know some positions within SDFC, the Chrome Ball Tour, all that. But yeah, Chrome Ball Tour, Carl's battery scheduled August third. That's going to be fun. Uh, you yeah. guys are going to go. Hopefully, it's because done. I'm sure the rib ties and everybody else are just like, please, we're tired of the short guy that talks too much. Anyway, <laughs> love but you. speaking of positions within SDFC, what's one you guys think? is like more important than people realize not a surface position like we didn't even know exactly what a technical director was but it's obviously a, a very important position what are the types of positions do you think are like that uh, well i don't want to take too many i have two but i'll just go with one just pick with one yeah um i'm gonna go with like a head trainer Someone who can prevent injuries or perhaps keep someone from not being injured as long as they should be. I think it's a super important, yeah. or maybe maybe more of a training staff is probably a better way of looking at it. But I'll go with that trainer. Good freaking call. And I can, yeah, from a Chelsea fan, I will tell you right now, holy shit, a, head, a good head trainer is incredibly important. Yeah, kind of what, uh, what I was thinking is it sort of goes, I guess, well, supposedly on the same line as that, but... Is like the medical staff, so which is similar to like the training staff, but I guess if you're pointing down like a uh, specific position at the club, the director of medical, I was checking out the uh, um, the okay. SDF, the San Diego Wave, rather, their um, director of medical, and just kind of going down that. But like a medical staff, I thought was just kind of an important. You know, you're doing so much, yeah. and you're also yeah. like you're not just there for games; you're training with them, you're watching training there, and you're like you're getting to know them, and just like I don't know, just kind of that medical aspect, which kind of you know goes in with the training but yeah no yeah. that but i think both and they are different like chris your guys would develop training exercises things like that whereas literally colonials your your guys would draw the blood and check blood and literally make sure they're healthy and all that jive so i totally agree with y'all yeah mine was i was thinking it was kind of before we're going over the news of the new sporting director but i was thinking gm and scout especially scouts that can go overseas I don't know if that's directly the sporting director, but if like extended scouts that can go to the premiership, they can go to Africa, all the right to dream, Norway, everywhere, um, to get young talent, even if they're like 15 from other countries, would be huge for the longevity of the team as a whole. That scouting is kind of like, uh, no one thinks about it, but it's very important for getting kind of untouched talent, especially with soccer more than any other sport, because it's worldwide. You get guys who go to random places all over the world that they can pull 
young talent no one knows about. Yeah, dude, that is a skill. Finding the diamond in the rough type of deal. Like that is that is the soccer story over and over and over again every single year. So absolutely. Um, I think uh player liaison would be important, especially for this team. And that's I think to me, that's someone that helps the people that are moving here or never been here or anything like that adapt to live in San Diego. But that includes, you know, having somebody to talk to, all that, and especially with the right to dream stuff, because I imagine there are going to be a lot of Right to Dream Academy players coming through and all that. And soccer seems to be a very clicky sport. And especially with managers and coaches picking favorites a lot and things like that. I mean, you see it at the highest level when you're, why is this player playing? And it's literally because it's the coach's favorite, you know, player or something like that when maybe somebody more talented or better fitting could, could do a job. I think players that maybe didn't come up through the right to dream and all that might feel outcast or whatnot. So that player lays on making sure everyone's happy and good to go, you know, almost like HR type of deal. Uh, but I do think that that's an important aspect that even today, some teams don't think about is, you know, they're your employees, just like at a job site, you want your employees to be happy. They produce more when they're happy. Um, so I think a player lays on would be pretty important. So, yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I think the that the liaison could probably serve as translator too for a lot of mm -hmm. the potentially African players or or the uh, guys from the Nordsland team as well. Oh yeah, uh, don't gamble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I had on the SDFC front. Unless you guys had anything else. Well, I wanted to say by number two. Yeah, do it. Since, since no one yeah, else yeah. said it, assistant head coach, aka Coach Beard. If we're going to keep talking about <laughs> Ted Lasso, that's what we are. Some, some wild <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> goes down and does that's a bunch it. of cocaine with the Dutch team on a wild Wednesday night. Exactly. <laughs> Just oh, they have uh, cool. I got to watch that episode. I don't, uh, the Dutch, I don't know. Yeah, when they go to Netherlands. Ooh, I don't think one. it was cocaine. I think it was other drugs. But, no, I know. I, I was kind of spitball. It was it was, nonetheless, yeah. yeah. yeah he maybe, but that, maybe that is what we need. Yeah. Some crazy coke had to really love. <laughs> yeah, just the energy. Yeah, yeah because San Diego is yeah. chill. Like, we need someone intense to fucking knock us. You know, come on. Y'all, let's go. You can't just hang out at the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Come on, man. Look at it. It's pretty. Yeah. The, the sunset, beach. though. Look at the sunset. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay. And you gotta come in like just murder, rip their heads off, just skin them alive. <laughs> yeah. like that. Skin them alive. The ocean is full of blood. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but no. Quick in the MLS front. Did you guys see DeAndre Yedlin's assist in it Cincinnati? Was sick. Huh? Right oh when I dropped him, just, uh, of course I drop him. Like, <laughs> it was dope though. I did see it. Yeah. Yeah. That was literally all I wanted to talk about because I watched it over and over and over. It was, <laughs> it was such a display. Yeah. I loved it. But no, you want what else? Another thing that's nice is Jesus, just goals on goals on goals. Just there's so, so many fun. goals every freaking game. I mean, so fun. yeah, the least goals was one nil. Every <laughs> game goals. All right. MLS 360 was just pop it off this it weekend popping. like every yeah. they kept trying to like talk about something in the studio and then the host would have to interrupt and the how down there one minute i don't i can't use yeah. accent i like that <laughs> guy though. yeah yeah they're, they're all pretty cool unfortunately yeah, they pretty good crew unfortunately did not translate to the uh champ cup concap champions cup mls teams are getting absolutely stomped yeah mm. I mean, not, maybe maybe not stomped i mean new england lost four nil at home to America, uh, that's that's bad, dude. You're losing four nil at home, bro. You can't be doing that. Uh, Columbus, Columbus, of course they they did all right, one one against Tigres and Gignac scored. And oh my gosh, I love that guy. He's French. He's the same French Gignac, Chris, from back in the day. He went to Mexico and he just has dominated. He's still amazing. Oh wow, crazy! Sounds like a fine and, wine. I'll be glad the day, Gignac. <laughs> Monterey beat Miami in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know they played in Fort Lauderdale right now. I guess they haven't built the stadium, huh? 
No, that's where their stadium is. Oh. Right? I don't know. We no, might no. need a fact check. Not so interesting is. if that's the case. No, I have no clue. I couldn't care less. You know? <laughs> uh, Puka played uh, Costa Rica team. Club sport Herediano. And I like them because Natalie and Samantha, my sister's from another mister. And that mister is actually Carlos. And he is he was from past, unfortunately. But he played semi-professional soccer in Costa Rica. And that was his club. Uh, so sorry, they're losing 4-0 to Pachuca. So the Mexican teams are freaking dominating in the CONCACAF. Pretty much the CONCACAF Champions League. It's called the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Yeah. And man, you know what? I really hope that SDFC can turn that shit around because another thing, how sick is it going to be for us when FC kicks ass, makes it to the Champions Cup, and then we're going to away games at freaking Monterey? Oh a cup game. Like, oh, exactly a right. cup game. Cup final at Stadio yeah. Azteca, maybe? Oh, oh that is dream, a man. Yeah, oh, my God. We gotta crawl before home. we can walk there, guys. We gotta. I know. Gotta, I know. Getting, getting, yeah. there, getting erect over here. I didn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of looking more for, forward to more like the away games. That would be fun, like trips, especially if we play like MLS Cup games in New York and stuff, and have to f- go to New York to like Red Bull Stadium. God, we're yeah. like a week, a year away. Oh my God! Not Great. even. Oh, yeah, about a year. Yeah. I'm going. I'm right gonna get there. so rowdy at Salt Lake. Salt Lake, you look out, you Mormons. Yeah, watch out. For Mormons. Mormons. Watch out, y'all. Coming <laughs> for you. And if we go yeah. to see a, a, a Rapids game, we have to go to um, Casa Bonita. Oh, oh Casa Bonita. Bonita. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. Ah, oh, scary. <laughs> <Especially dumb. laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you guys want I didn't I didn't really check on a lot of players abroad. I saw Juventus was trying to cut McKinney's salary and he just needs to leave and come to SDFC. We'll treat you good, dude. We know how uh, good you are. Yeah. Juventus treats him like shit. What's going on? Bunch of meanies. Why. Is that yeah, are, are they like mean. whatever? I don't know. I don't know. That is, is that just, <laughs> are they <laughs> are they catering to me as an American and they know? ESPN FC knows, like, and their algorithm is just like, send it to this guy. He'll take it personally just because Wes McKinney. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, it's You're bullshit. On. They try to get take away his. Up. They try to take away his locker, his parking spot. They're trying to get him to take less money, even though he leads the league in assists. Like, he's good. Right he's great, man. I don't uh, think we can yeah. afford him. Like, I mean, I would love. It's a pipe dream, but if he, I mean, it's no way that we can afford him unless he's uh, one yeah. of like the the DPS, but. He would be wonderful. I mean, but no, yeah. I I I got to imagine another team will snag him, even if he leaves uh, Juventus. Prams, but yeah, Prammer Championship. Yeah. So, how's everybody in fantasy? Good. There it is. <laughs> Love that song. Oh man, I won this week. Sorry, producer Trev. Chris, <laughs> you beat me by like a point, right, Chris? Uh, it has since updated, and I beat you by two points, fifty-five oh, to fifty-three. You beat me by two points in fucking English fantasy, you son of a bitch. Yeah, well, sometimes <laughs> you, you lose to the better man. It's mm-hmm. tied at the top, at the top of uh, the fantasy pram, man. Like uh, it's us three. I think I'm leading. I have more points than anybody, and I'm third. Well, hey, finally usurped me in the in the points. Total points. What else? But that's scary. I'm going to fucking get fifth or something by the end of the season when I've been first most of the time. I know it. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> how did uh, how did Kick and Beef do in MLS? Yeah. <laughs> Lost to Stu. You did <laughs> not. Yeah. Stu's, Stu's been on a run. He's making a Dude. run. Stu's good, Four, man. Yeah. 56 49. I had a decent week, but fucking Stu. Stu's going to write in a question and be like, how does it feel to lose to Stu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need Stu here as right a now. Stu we taste. As a Stu yeah. taste. <laughs> we need to hear from Stu. Yeah, we need like Stu to call in. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Um, oh, no. Head to head, am I really in first place? I am tied for first with who? Kicking beef? Oh. 
Yeah. I'm so upset Thank I you. lost this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take who it. Are you, who are you playing guy. this? Oh, call it's me and you this week. Ooh, no, bro. I might Big. drop a Cucho. Yeah, you will. Really? Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> he got like Trevor and I were, producer Trevor and I were talking about it. He didn't play, I think, a couple of games due to Is like disciplinary right things. No, I th- I think oh. it was like he was being a little attitude, had a little, little, little bad boy Ooh. in him. And Ooh, a little testy. Like so interesting. And I don't know. I, I'm not 100 percent sure on exactly why, but I, I believe he was missing a little bit of time because of something uh-huh. like that. And but he's so good. I might just hang on to him. He is uh, the short King Acosta. He looks pretty amazing. So MVP last year, uh, Cincinnati undefeated, by the way, team I picked they're good, one of three. Damn. LAFC is trash. Keegan, well, he, they're going to get like third from last. They might not make the playoffs and everybody makes the fucking playoffs. You know what? I'll be happy to be honest. If they don't make the playoffs have a shitty year, I'll be very happy. Same. You know what? Point, honestly. Yeah. Like, you screw them. And then to go in next year, steamroll them. Yeah. Burn our you know, LAFC $150 kids. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, ooh, that would be fun. Then you could, ooh, then you could really start the F F F C feelings, you know? I might Fuck do that just for me, karma's mess sake. Me up. To, I don't know. My mom gave me that. I don't know. We'll see. Colin, I saw I your video. Why were you burning the kid I bought you? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. or JoJo. <laughs> with like the coke snorting technical director who we're talking yeah. about me and him were just burning jerseys <laughs> it's like taking a shit on it <laughs> <laughs> oh we need to hire that man yep uh, all you gotta do is walk around downtown san diego for five seconds and you'll find him <laughs> you'll find PB him. On a Friday. Yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't All want right. this. I didn't want this to go unnoticed, but Trevor, uh, producer Trevor, is in last place. However, let's that, go ahead and hit. Go ahead and hit a soundbite if you like, Trev. <laughs> Sweet. He's just fuming. He's just fuming. Goddamn. No, this, this was a backhanded compliment, or the opposite of that, I guess. Uh, he's one in five, but he's. Only three points out from being the top scorer in the league, and he's by far conceded the highest amount of points. His goal differential is negative forty-two, <laughs> which is just really unfortunate. <laughs> that bad true. luck. Seriously, I hate that. It's Chad, a- that wasn't meant to embarrass you. I swear. I got my last ten bucks on you. Oh my god! I can't believe you just uh, hit me with the crunchy the clown. That's fantastic. Shit. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, uh, Producer Trev will just hit us with ones he's never used before. By the way, and that's the first time we've heard them. So they just hit in case me every time, man, hard. they hit hard every time. They get me real good. I'm crying over Why here. Why do we? Really do. Um, all right, you guys ready for a game? Let's do it. It's only oh, please. Why you have to be mad? All right, we're doing a fun game tonight. No, no competition. Just a, just oh, a little, little fun skis. God, give us a break. I text you guys. Brain. I text you guys two of them already. I got three more. Um, so I gave you time to think about two, and there's three new ones just off off the top. <laughs> Clearly didn't look at the text. Hey, now you got. That's all right, dude. Just uh, said it. My friend looked at it. Like there's... I group watch the videos. Yeah, you there's have kids, 50... though. There's 58 text messages playing Roblox. I took the photos. 58 text messages, and I was like, <laughs> scroll to the end. 58, <laughs> okay, amazing. We're coordinating over here. Yeah. That's all right. Then you got to go off the top, no matter what. All right. Oh, okay. So it's the all game, good. I think I the working title. I th- I don't think, but I I have it as this or that. But it should be who or who. I don't know. I see working title. Whatever. Everybody, whatever it comes up with, Nate. I'm sure it's going to be cooking. Hey, oh, yeah. Don't get cooked thinking that. too hard on that. You know, just get a good night's sleep. Uh, an example for this game, you jerks, is so <laughs> who's more? Oh, that's the name of the game is who's more likely. All right. Who's who's more likely to chew with their mouth open? Harry Kane or Harry Kane? Just joking. I had to make that joke. <laughs> got, the way he looks. Yeah. Uh, but it will be two different people. But you guys get the gist of it, right? Mm-hmm. I like All it. Right. Harry Kane. <laughs> Who's more likely 
to pick their nose and eat it? Arsene Wenger or Mikel Arteta? <laughs> Arsene uh, Wenger is an old man. Arsene Wenger's got that big old schnoz. Yeah, hair's you know. coming out of it. He's probably doing it on a five, six a day. Um, he wasn't the one. Yeah, I'd say Wenger, I think but I think Arteta would do it just out of curiosity. Like maybe this will make me a better coach. Um, I think Arsene Wenger, being French, he would never eat anything unless it came from a French restaurant. <laughs> the, Please, your thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say Wenger, but then I was just thinking who... Yeah, yeah, I would go as well. He's got that huge, huge schnoz. But then I kept thinking, in my mind, I couldn't remember the name of the coach. There's those YouTube clips of him. Yogi Lowe. Julie and I talked about it when I told her it's the German national team coach. Okay, I couldn't remember his name, and those were bad. And he's, like, scratching his balls and sniffing. That guy is just a dirty jerk. Scratching his balls and sniffing. That is burnt into my brain, and anybody that was on any major soccer website in that time has seen it as well. So, again, the six. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that means yeah. to move on. It is like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's more likely to camp in the left lane and mess up traffic? Busquets or Messi? <laughs> Arson <Busquets>. Vegas. <laughs> I'd say Busquets. Messi's short, though. Like, <laughs> it's true. He can barely exactly drive along, like probably. That. He probably has a driver for us. So he probably and he's got a Ferrari or a Lambo, so it's probably a little too much car for him anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> say, <laughs> he doesn't run anyway, too. Messi on the field, he kind of walks and it's like short burst, so he probably just is camps in the fast lane and sits there, <laughs> and then he'll get a shoot, like a mile in, like, open in front of him, and then brrrm, and then he'll slam the brakes and go slow again. <laughs> That's a really spot on. Be very annoying. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> That's amazing. Nate, why don't All you right. give us your thoughts first on this next one? Okay. Who is more likely to love mother in law? Landon Donovan or Clint Dempsey? To what their mother in law? Love their mother in law. Love. I'm glad that's what it was. Clint Dempsey or Donovan? Clint Dempsey or Landon Donovan? Dempsey, like actually man. genuinely love their like, mother-in-law. Okay. Genuinely love them. It's Dempsey. Yeah. Like I bet Donovan's no. like, oh, I love you, mom, but they got some issues for sure. I bet Dempsey's like got some home cooking. They go out and kill chickens together <laughs> as one, and they <laughs> and they love each other I, very much. I think that I yep. I think Landon Donovan um tolerates his mother-in-law. <laughs> That's the best word for it, would be my guess. Produ- producer Trev right. chimed in before I even answered and said Dempsey exclamation point. So it's got to be Dempsey all day. Poor Landon. And I love Landon. I mean, he seems Lando. like I'm such a nice fellow. You know what, Landon? A- I have a Landon Donovan scarf, but I don't have a Clint Dempsey scarf. So there you go, big boy. Oh, got a Dempsey kit right there. I mean, sorry. Yeah. I also have a Dempsey kit, but. I just say Landon's the kind of guy who loves his mother in law, but. He doesn't spend time with her. He'll like pay for her to go on a vacation somewhere else. Like, hugger, good to see you. You're on the plane. Enjoy Hawaii for five days. Dempsey, like Colin <laughs> said, Dempsey's out there killing chickens, plucking them. You know, really getting the time in with the family. Yeah, showing his mother-in-law how to fish. Mm-hmm. And I picture I picture Landon to be a real big mama's boy, like his actual mama. So I can picture there being some tension, perhaps some jealousy there. And Lando Ooh. wants nothing to do with that. So he fucking hates his mother. <laughs> <laughs> so Dempsey by default, I guess. Nice. Chicken plucking hey, Dempsey. Sw- Chicken all plucker. <laughs> all right. Who's more likely to cheat at Monopoly? Breck Shea or Casey Keller? Breck Shea. Because right. you can't trust a kid with long hair, and you can always trust a bald man. Am I right, Nate? You know, I was just an old bald man. You can't trust a wily <laughs> you know, little I'm going to say Casey Keller. I think Breck Shea is too much of an artiste. You know, he liked to do his art. He does acid all the time, probably, I'm guessing, or shrooms, something like that. Um, I don't think he's the type to cheat. He'd probably just be like, man, I don't even know why money's like a thing, dude. Like, I feel like Breck Shea is more like that. <laughs> And Casey Keller's like, <laughs> fucking win, dude. I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's that just my go. You guys all went with Breck Shea, huh? 
hate this. All right. Last one. Who's more likely to pee in the pool? Hey, Yepa or Marcus? <laughs> I knew you were not. <laughs> Which one? Marcus? We can't call him out. We can't call oh, him out. Well, I shit. knew it in my head. Hey, Yepa or Marcus? Or in the family, they're going to get roasted like everybody else. <laughs> I guess I'd lean Marcus because he's just a little, a little older. He's he's kind of got a little bit of maybe hopefully a little striker's edge, and he's just like, I'm going to pee in the pool. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Who cares? Who the name? I, was thinking that, I was thinking that it would be Marcus, but if Yepa did it, he would be the one that would be like, I piss in the pool. And then I'd be like, oh, sick, dude. Like, thank you. It's warmer. I don't, I don't want you to be. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the two new signings, by the way. Okay. Yeah, case, cover that at the top of the hour. That. No, no, yeah, I'm just kidding. It's a tough one, which I don't know if we shouted out that Marcus scored this week, by the way. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sweet, sweet. You boy. know what? It's uh, it's just normal. You know, it's going to be, that's just going to be something we see week in, week out. So it's all like, just like Marcus like, scored again. And what just else? like Keegan's creepy week in, week out, yep, he's peeing in the pool for sure. Mm. Uh, I'm going Marcus, and I think he thinks he can get away with it because he's so gosh darn handsome. He just knows he, he can get a smile and a wink, and then their heart will melt right into the pee pool. He gets nonverbal cues right now. He's just you saying, read my mind, can... Nate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He's the man. He's just sitting in the pool, and he's like, I got to piss. I ain't getting out of this pool. Pisses, swims up to the bar. He's the man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm back in a trailer, in. <laughs> But all right, uh, that was it. Was for, Good stuff for uh, the game that had three titles, and I think uh, who is more likely is the last title. So, oh hey, before we uh, move on, um, the April. Th- do you want to talk about the April thirteenth um, thing at Hop 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 Anonymous? Heap, yeah, Heap Hop Heap Heap Hop Anonymous. Mean, if you, if you sh- one, you should join the Riptide <laughs> Club, and if you join the Riptide, you can join the Discord. And go to okay. the Discord and, well, first become a member of the Riptides and then join the Discord and then click on a link, which is an invite to an event on the 13th at Hopnonymous, which is a brewery in San Diego. I don't know what the event is for. It's just a fan event. Uh, but, uh, you know, there might be something exciting going on. Who knows? Oh, yeah, so, yeah I think didn't everybody... even put you on the spot. The, from what I read is that it's going to be like a... Uh... Like a fan event, not necessarily just, Ooh. you know, it would be a good fan event. So uh, hopefully some I of mean, us can make it. I did what I normally do, and I skimmed it, and I was like, yep, I'll be there. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you experience it live. You don't need to read about the jargon of what could be. You'll be there. Exactly. I just take it as it comes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, one is you're being mindful, man. That's what you got to yeah, do. Absolutely. Well, shameless plug, Saturday, April 14th, April 13th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Hopnonymous Brewing Company. Nine two one one. I will be there. I don't know if I should say that. That might turn some people off. But Keegan will be there. No, nah, I don't know if he's going to be there. I just put him on the spot. Possibly. Yeah. It's my birthday the day that. before, so I think we're going out. But we'll see. Might Sweet. wander and hammer. Take the firm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, if nobody had anything else. Uh- Oh, I was about to pass. Oh, no one even good. fucking tried to score. Out, yeah, that's a Wednesday that's, for you. Uh, that's a Wednesday. Let's pull it a messy. Wednesday. 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 Wednesday night. All right, y'all. All right, good guys. game, boys.